Okay, year 12, I'm going to break this up into three parts. And this is going to be partial fractions. And this is going to be the first part that's going to allow you to do questions one and two. So the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to write some notes. So I'm just going to put some up here. And put your heading as partial fractions. So oh, let's get rid of that. I'm not going to be writing like that. Here we go. So partial fractions. And this is just a way of splitting things. So let's start with the first one. We know oh, no. Uh, if we have a fraction, I don't know, a on f of x plus b on g of x, to add those we need a common denominator. Now, the easiest common denominator to get is to multiply the denominators. So if I multiply the denominators, I'll get f of x on g of x, uh, and g of x is my common denominator, and I'll get a, well, what do I need to multiply that by? g of x plus b times f of x. And that's just to get common denominators. Therefore, we know to get from there to there, we make a common denominator, but we know we can go back this way so that the reverse is true. So therefore, if we have one on f of x, and it doesn't have to be one, it can be anything on the top, g of x, there exists a on f of x plus b on g of x. We can split that fraction and know that we're going to get it in something like that. So let's do an example. Let's try one on, and we're just going to do linear ones to begin with. X plus one, x plus one, x minus one. Now imagine, we're relating this to integration. Imagine if you had to integrate. That would be difficult. But we know there exists out there something a on x plus 1 plus b on x minus 1. There is something out there, and they could be polynomials in the top. They could be anything. Now, once we know that that's true, we're just going to multiply... both sides by the denominator on the left hand side x plus 1 x minus 1 now if we do that well on the left hand side I'll be just left with 1 and on the right hand side well the x plus 1 will cancel with the x plus 1 so I'll just get a times x minus 1 and I'll get b times x plus 1, because the minus 1 will cancel. And now, I'll just expand that. 1 equals ax plus, sorry, minus a plus bx plus b. And then I'll collect the x's, so I get a plus b x minus a plus b. And now I can equate the coefficients. So I'm going to equate 
the coefficients. Now, sometimes you'll have x's on the left-hand side and you'll have constants on the left-hand side. This time we don't. That doesn't mean there isn't a coefficient. It just means the coefficient is zero. So by equating the coefficients, zero equals a plus b, because there's zero x's on the left-hand side, and one equals minus a plus b. And what I have here are two equations. Let me call this equation number one. Call this equation number two. And if I go equation number one plus equation number two, well, when I add them, if I add the left-hand side, I'll get one. The a's will cancel, and I'll get 2b. And therefore, b equals a half. Now, then I just sub b equals a half into 1, and I'll get a plus a half equals 0, so a equals negative a half. So if I go back to my original 1 on x plus 1, x minus 1 can be rewritten as a half on x plus 1 plus negative a half on x minus 1. And that is really easy to integrate because if we take those halves out and integrate them separately, we'll just get the integral of logs because the derivative is on the top. So, but I want to come back to this point here. And I'm going to go, that was one way to find a and b, but here is a better way. Now, I showed you the hard way first because we're going to have to use it later. Here is a better way to find the values of a and b. Now, remember, what did we have? We had 1 equals a x minus 1 plus b x plus 1. Well, let's let x equal 1, because it works for all values of x. And, all, and if I do that, I'll get 1. And here, that's just going to be 0 plus b, 1 plus 1. So I get 1 equals 2b. And b equals a half. Now let's go back to the original statement again. 1 equals ax minus 1 plus bx plus 1. And if we let x equal negative 1, this time this will equal 0. And I'll get 1 equals a minus 1 minus 1. So 1 equals negative 2a, which equals negative a half. And we arrive at the same point. So it doesn't matter which way, but one is easier than the other. So now let's do this for one of the questions. And we're going to do question 1a. And it asks for the integral of, I'm just finding it here, the integral of 3x plus 1 on x minus 3, x plus 2. Now, I'm going to come back and write it there, but I'm going to do some work underneath here. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to say that 3x... Oh, gee. 3x plus 1 over x minus 3, x plus 2 equals some thing, it's not a value, it could be anything, could have x's in it, on 
x minus 3, a polynomial, plus b on x plus 2. And we know that that exists. So now we just multiply by the denominator in the left-hand side, which means I'm going to get 3x plus 1 equals a x plus 2 plus b x minus 3. Now, let's just let x equal, let x equal negative 2. So 3 times negative 2 plus 1 equals, this is going to equal 0. So I've just got 0 plus b times negative 2 minus 3. And that's going to give me negative 5 here. And I'm going to get negative 5b. So b is going to equal 1. So this time, we'll let x equal 3. And then this time, this will equal 0. So I'll get 3 times 3 plus 1 equals a outside of 3 plus 2 plus 0. And that'll give us 10 equals 5a. So a equals 2. Okay, let's go back and we'll write that as this is now the integral of 2 on x minus 3 plus 1 on x plus 2 dx. Now, I could separate those, and I'm going to just so you can see that it works. I, I didn't do it in my notes because I know... I know how to do it quickly. I'm going to take that 2 out of there. And as you can see, now I've got... Uh, the derivative on the top and I can just do my log so that's going to equal 2 ln x minus 3 plus ln x plus 2 plus some constant so that's question 1a let's have a look at question uh, Two, which one did I say? 2D. It's the only one different. So if I do 2D, and this one is, find the integral of 3x squared minus 12x plus 1 over x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3, dx. Well, we'll come back to that. So what we've got to do is now we've got to find this. Now, this is a cubic, cubic with linear in there. <clears throat> so we know that 3x squared minus 12x plus 1 over x minus 1, x minus 2 x minus 3 equals something over x minus 1 plus something over x minus 2 plus something over x minus 3. So multiply by the denominator on the other side and I'm going to get 3x squared minus 12x plus 1 equals. Now this time, I'm going to get two of, it, two of the denominators with each of the pronumerals on top. So I'm going to get a, and I'm going to get x minus 2, x minus 3, and I'm going to get b, x minus 1, x minus 3, and I'm going to get c, x minus 1, x minus 2. 
All right. So now let's just let x equal 1. Let x equal 1. And you'll see that that and that are going to equal 0. So if I let x equal 1 in here, I get 3 times 1 squared minus 12 times 1 plus 1 equals a 1 minus 2, 1 minus 3, and 3 minus 12. Oh, sorry, that should be 11. Sorry about that. That should be 11. So that'll give me 3 minus 12, but that's going to give me 2. And that's going to give me negative 1 times negative 2, which is positive 2, and I get 2a. So 1 equals a. All right. Now, just keep going with this. We'll let x equal 2. And this time, I'll get rid of this one and this one. So I'll get 3 times 2 squared minus 12 times 2 plus 11 equals b, 2 minus 1, 2 minus 3. Okay, 3 times 2 squared is 12. 12 minus 24 is 12. Plus 11. It's going to give me negative 1. And here I'm going to get b times negative 1 times... Uh, sorry, 1 times negative 1, so I'm going to get negative b. So b equals 1. Okay. Finally, let x equal 3, and this time that'll get rid of this one and this one. So, 3 times 3 squared minus 12 times 3 plus 11 equals c, x minus 1 x minus 2, uh, that all comes out to 2, and I get um, 3 minus 1 is 2 times that, so I'm going to get 2c, oh, and look at this, c also equals 1. Let's go back to our original expression, and we'll integrate now because we know they are the same thing, so it's 1 on x minus 1 plus 1 on x minus 2 plus 1 on x minus 3 dx, which gives me ln x minus 1 plus ln x minus 2 plus ln x minus 3 plus a constant. Now, that's enough to get you through questions one and two. So good luck with that.